response to the criticism that the demand by labor for a minimum wage of over 400,000 is not only outrageous, but not also economic vi economically viable, sir? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the figure given uh, by labor was to, or uh, is meant for negotiation. At the same time, the figure of the company as a labor right in the budget is extremely insulting. Under the current hyperinflation caused by the implementation of neoliberal policies by the Bolatinubu administration. It's almost unthinkable to offer 48,000 euros. So the whole idea is that the two figures will be considered and there has to be some meeting point. By last night, the government had committed itself to commencing fresh negotiations on the basis of 60,000, or rather, the government now says, we are ready to pay 60,000. As of today, or rather, we are asked in 2019, the minimum wage was 30,000 under the Bari administration. It was increased by 40%. Under the Bolatin administration, it was increased by 35,000. In other words, as of today, we are talking of about 72,000. So the government should. Meet labor halfway. If the government felt last year, well, for six months we are going to pay you 35,000 in addition to what you have earned. That means 65,000. The bar is 40%. That's also 72,000. So the government cannot go back to that. 47,000. As the Yorubas will say, Oh God, if you cannot improve my condition, leave me where you met me. So you can't say, Oh, I was giving you 65,000 last year because of your failure to meet the minimum. Of our economic policies this year, the situation is worse. It's illogical to talk of 47,000, I, I mean 48,000, and I think that is this. Yes, the government may say, oh, 400,000 naira uh, cannot be sustained at the same time. 48,000 naira cannot be a take home, it will take anybody who in Nigeria after. But what is more important? The payment of minimum wage to workers in North Africa. As almost put us to shame. And that is why the government will have to consider the economic policies being operated in the country. Fast track the negotiations so that within the next one week. There will be a concrete agreement that will be taken to the parliament for an act. The strike was unnecessary if the government had complied with the law. The strike will not have occurred. And that is why the government has to 
learn to take labor. Another oppressed Nigeria is much more serious. The National Assembly had tried to wade in at some point in time, sir, and uh, the led division actually led to nowhere. One had wondered why the National Assembly itself has not revealed the National Minimum Wage Act of 2019. Mm -hmm. The National Assembly always, always intervenes on the eve of, of strikes or in the middle of a strike. The labor movement or the trade unions and indeed all organizations of are never taken seriously. What is done, and this is where the government made a mistake this time around. Once a notice of a strike is given, the federal government or a state government in Nigeria rushes to the national industrial. To procure an expert in order, thou shalt not strike. Even if you obtain such an order, it does not address the demand of workers that was to lead to that was to lead to a strike. So sometimes with these court orders, you can only postpone the evil. But for us as lawyers, once we are confronted with a court order, we are compelled to advise our client. Please comply with the order. Allow us to move to the court and have the order quashed or set aside or vacated. The Attorney General has stated that it has amounted to a contempt of court for labor to have impact on this strike action. Has the labor done anything wrong, sir? Because with it is respect to the Honorable Attorney General for this. The Honorable Attorney General referred to two court orders. The first one was the order obtained last year to prevent a strike. We challenged the jurisdiction, the competence of the order. We challenged the jurisdiction of the order to make of the court to make the order. The government then had a discussion with us. So let us see. The Attorney General of the Federation drew up an agreement based on our understanding. And one of the terms of that agreement is that negotiations for a new minimum will be concluded within one, within one month. Talking of several months ago. So we already have an agreement signed. By our cancer, about our, our clients and, and ourselves. Hmm. So even though it has not become the judgment of the court, again, because for reasons best known to the government, it has not been filed. But the agreement has been signed. So we are bound by the terms of the agreement. Secondly, Attorney General also referred to the case of Adam Social Manager. And the federal government of Nigeria, yes, out of a decision, is to the fact that labor cannot go on strike. No, labor cannot protest outside the ambit of a trade dispute. This was a trade dispute. The struggle for a minimum wage was a trade dispute. So it's in line with that judgment, the, the strike. The Attorney General then said further that because Labour did not give a 15 day notice, sections 41 and 42 of the Trade Dispute Act are violated. Again, with profound respect, the decision of Labour this time was anchored on experience. Anytime the government was given a notice, Usually more than 15 days. The government will rush to the national infrastructure and procure an expert in order. You don't get an expert in order 
And next party order, she will be easy by any court. If the other side can be put on notice. So all these cases are based on what I call self-inflicted, self-induced urgency. The office of the, the chairman of the attorney general, and my office in Abuja, are stone's throw from each other. The office of the Nigerian Labour Congress, the headquarters of the Nigerian Labour Congress in Abuja, the headquarters of TUC in Abuja. Are very close to the office of the attorney general. So you can't say we have any difficulty in putting the defendants or the respondents on notice. But what I've done is to abuse the power of the National Industrial in issuing expert order. Well, there was no urgency. If I say I'm going to embark on a trial in a month's time, and we're busy mobilizing for it, and at the time the strike, the strike is to take off, you go to a court order on the eve of the strike to obtain a, a court order. That was what the former president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, now Senator Adam Sosiomo, was referred to as a black market injunction. Interesting. And when you do that, you encourage citizens to breach the orders of the, of, the, of the court. But what we do on our own part is, out of reluctance, we advise our client. It wouldn't take them. Because these orders have not been obtained properly, allow us to go and set it up. On one occasion, he took the late chief and uh, 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 myself about six hours in the Sheraton Hotel area to persuade the Nigerian Labour Congress to suspend his strike to allow us to approach the court to vacate his son. And we succeeded. Then we told them, you can go on with your action. They, 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 the idea of obtaining ex party orders in the case of a suit is the most odious. Because this is a union that will go from one campus to the other to conduct a referendum as to whether his members should go on strike or not. You allow the process to, the referendum to take place. In every campus, and on the eve of the election, I mean, the strike, you then rush to the national industry. That is what, that is not what the law is about. And it's not just about us. People must learn to ensure that the courts are not exposed to the day. If I announce during my campaign, I'm going to restore a certain traditional law. I am going to repeal a law that split an emirate council. The matter was debated in parliament, passed into law, and then later issued to a traditional ruler. What the National Industrial Court should do is to ask the parties, go and settle and bring your terms of settlement here so that we can make it our judgment. But you don't say, don't go on strike. Because the law allows me to go on strike. And in my reply to the letter of the Honorable Attorney General, I have challenged him to advise the government to speed up the negotiations. Because the National Minimum Wage Act of 2019 expired a month ago. Section 3 of that act provides that this law shall operate for five years and shall be replaced. So before the expiration, the National Assembly ought to have enacted, ought to have passed an MP, signed into law by the president. Now suddenly now, because of the strike, 
Within one week now, a new minimum wage will be agreed upon. And then we will expect the Honorable Attorney General or the Executive to send a bill to the National Assembly, you know, so that it can be passed and signed by the President. So that's what I should do. So the strike will not have occurred if the government had followed the agreement with enter into last year, if the government had complied with the National Minimum Wage Act of 2019, this fact would not have been called. I.e., we have five years to bring out a new uh, 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 Minimum Wage Act. And yeah, yeah. that was not done by the government. So you can't blame labor for going on strike. Going ahead, sir. <clears throat> There's been a lot of challenges, especially for some states inability to pay the minimum wage even now. How do we, do you, do you propose to address or that should, should this matter be addressed so that this implementation of higher minimum wage will cut across all the states of the country? Now, uh, the government does not seem to understand what a new minimum wage and so fashionable. A struggle for a new minimum wage is different from a demand for a general salary review. When because of biting economic conditions in a country based on the implementation of certain inimical policies of the government. It becomes necessary to adjust the wages of workers. The essence of a national minimum wage is to bridge the gap, to close up the income disparity in the country. It does not mean that we are reviewing salaries down the line. So there's no way you can say we want to increase minimum wage from 30,000 naira to 80,000 naira to 100,000 naira. And therefore, from the level of a planner or a messenger, we increase salaries up to the level of a permanent secretary. That is not understanding. So if the law is allowed to function effectively, we don't need to have a strike over uh, uh, a new minimum wage. Right? Yes. Uh, and I'm talking of the salaries. Huh? The, there's a national body. Yes. Right? Yes, right. So, Called the so National so Salaries, so Incomes, and Wages Commission. Sure. That body should now be made to function properly. So that before the next five years, that body will advise the government from time to time to adjust the salaries and conditions of workers as well as all other public officers in the country. The, the revenue mobilization, eh? yes, the fiscal condition, is required to fit the salaries and allowances of all public officers in Nigeria. In fact, by virtue of Section 70 of the Constitution, that body shall fix the salaries and allowances of legislators. But what else? Legislators have taken themselves out of the Constitution and fixed their own salaries. In addition, right, they also allocate part of the budget to what they call constituency projects. The contractors are usually nominated by them. But isn't that legal? Are all these not illegal? No, there are even the, the case of Ubani. Monday Ubani and the National Assembly set up and the National Assembly have heard the courts have heard that the body, the National Assembly has no powers to fix its own salary. 
we will create an atmosphere of illegality. So, I have no problem with the National Assembly believing that this is what they are entitled to. But you must also amend the law. Right? To fit the salaries and allowances of other citizens who are in the public service. So, this is what is going on. So, what the National Assembly says, members of the, the leadership, some of the labor leaders. I was told that it was a very interesting experience. But the labor leaders were asking the legislators, the leaders of the legislative houses, how they are cast, the new gifts were behaving. <laughs> Functioning, you know, what fifty thousand per piece, or fifty thousand dollars per piece, or and they were also asking, when are you commencing the consistency projects? Which was the way of saying, right? Whereas you ask him to tighten our belt, right? But your bellies are protruding. Because you are overeating from the system. So for me, I, I, I think the issue of illegality does not arise. I, I believe that the issue of illegality does not arise. We have pointed out to the Attorney General of the Federation. What is important is a logical political solution to the crisis of crime. And once in the minimum way, I hope it's agreed upon in the next one, it will be made enacted into law, right? The question of a state government not being able to do it does not arise. When you talk of a tripartite committee to negotiate a new law, the federal government is involved. State governments are involved and private employers of labor are represented in the committee. So the agreement that is reached is based on the understanding of the tripartite committee. And so, and the whole idea is to prevent a situation whereby any of the parties, any employer of labor, will say, oh, we cannot pay. State government cannot say that. But they have more than enough to pay. It's about commitment. It's about the political will to pay the minimum wage. But this time around, the NSC, the TUC, and our law firm are factored. That once a new minimum wage is enacted in the law, no state, no party will be allowed to operate outside the law. And for me, it's a bit embarrassing on the part of the federal to say, Oh, some states have not even paid 30,000 naira, therefore they cannot pay the new minimum. I beg your pardon. That shouldn't come from a government. Because that's an admission of illegality. And that we are weak to enforce the law. You know, it's like say, oh, some people are smuggling fuel out of the country. How do you blame citizens for that? Isn't that your, isn't that your duty to stop smuggling? So, if any state government or any employer of labor does not pay, what does the law say? The attorney general has a duty to enforce the law. But this time we're not the labor movement and a law firm of it. I want the law is enacted. And then the employer of labor does not pay. We are going to take appropriate legal action to compel them to pay. 